Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to Final Dupot's Garage. Today we are going to be installing new headlights on my 2016 Chevy Silverado. These trucks from the factory, pretty much every trim uh, had a HID bulb, a D5S. The D5S bulb is unique to other HID bulbs because it has the ballast attached to the bulb itself. So it's a it's a it's an entire single unit. So this is the ballast on the back and then obviously the HID bulb in the front. The problem with the factory equipped HIDs is they are 25 watts. They are HIDs but they're really only giving the equivalent light output of, you know, a, a standard halogen 9005 or something of the of similar. So these more moto bulbs are a D5S same base, same ballast, except they are 35 watts. So now the increase in light output is significant. These are not a cheap upgrade in terms of a bulb swap because it is the ballast and the bulb in one. So what you're looking at here is about $350. I did buy these from the retrofit source. Uh, they are a good supply for all sorts of HID, LED accessories. Give them a visit. I'll put a link in the description box below. The bulbs basically just kind of clip in on these three spots and then there's a clip inside the highlight that locks them into place and there's a single connector wire that will connect right there. Let's get the old bulbs out of the truck and compare them real quick and then we will also show you how to uh, remove them and install them all. Before we go any further, I want to show off some upgrades I got for Fondue Pot's Garage. I got a pair of very nice work lights that are adjustable in height and tilt. Very, very bright and uh, this should definitely help. Uh, my video quality very very much. I also have a little clip light that I can use for tighter situations that clips or hangs or adjusts to my needs which will be very helpful today. And I also got a new sign for my garage for Christmas for my girlfriend to uh, you know hang in my garage and show up. Before we went any further I wanted to show you the light output from the stock bulbs. These are the OEM equipped GM bulbs and these are 25 watts. Probably about a 4300K color. They're just a basic yellowish color. They do an okay job at night, but I've definitely noticed uh, they they do lack in the distance um, department. These projectors have a bi-xenon capability so that they use the same bulb. They just flip down a shield inside the housing and it releases more light out onto the road. So now you can see the, the high beam pattern it uh, definitely releases a lot more light. I will do a comparison with one side being a Morimoto, one side being the OEM in a little bit, so you can just get a, a comparison of them right next to each other. And then at the end, I'll do the same thing here with both the Morimotos. The way you access these bulbs is from the back side of the headlight in the engine bay. So right there, there is a rubber cap on the back side of the headlight. This is the driver's side. That cap will just simply pop right out and then you can access the headlight. So this is the rubber boot that is on the back side of the headlight. There's two tabs on them. You just simply pull it right off and set it aside. Now you should be able to see inside the headlight, there's the OEM bulb. And on the side of the headlight, try not to block it, there is a little plastic tab and it simply turns up and then the bulb can be pulled straight back out of the housing. The connector is held in with one little clip you can just use your thumb to, to press it and then pull it out. Inside that housing, there is a plastic piece. It just turns and locks the housing into place or unlocks it. Here is the Morimoto bulb and here is the OEM GM bulb, which is actually a Phillips. So you can see they're overall the same shape, same overall size. Obviously you can see these are 25 watt. And then the Morimoto's are at 35 watt. It looks like the Morimoto bulbs have um, some more slots on the side of the housing of the ballast, probably for better cooling. Like I said, these are 35 watts versus 25 watts, so they will run a little hotter, but not enough to, to cause an issue. But they did cut some slots in the in the ballast housing to give a some extra cooling benefits I'm sure. Now the connector port is slightly offset, should make a difference when plugging it in. Um, the, the cable inside the housing has got some free rain, so it's not a big deal. As far as the connection points, we've got the same, you know, half moon there, square there, square on top, and then also square on the right side. So this should 
you know, drop right into place. Let's go ahead and put this one in and uh, get a comparison shot of the OEMs versus the Morimoto's. So now I'm going to install the bulb. There's those metal tabs in there that hold the ballast into place, so you'll just push it into place, you'll feel it kind of click, but then you need to turn the locking mechanism to make it actually lock into place. And there's tabs on both the left and right side to, to get that locking mechanism turned. So let's go ahead and plug it in. There's the connector here. Plug it into the bottom of the bulb, like so. Then tuck the wire in as you insert the bulb. Go ahead and line up your bulb into the projector and push the ballast into place. So just like that, it's sort of held into place with those clips. But then, like I said, you need to turn the plastic locking clip to lock the base of the bulb into place. And that can be done with one finger on either side of the ballast. So here's a side-by-side -side shot comparison of the OEM bulbs versus the Morimoto's. The OEMs are on the right and the Morimoto's are on the left. The color of the Morimoto's is 5500K, so you get a little more white versus the yellow over there on the OEM. More white with a you know tint of the blue, I guess you would say. There's a larger hot spot where the Morimoto's are shining on the wall compared to the OEMs. Um, hopefully the camera picks that up and, and really makes it um, noticeable. Let me flip on the high beams real quick. So there's the high beam comparison of the two bulbs. Definitely a larger hot spot on the left side, the Morimoto bulbs compared to the hot spot on the OEM side. So let's go ahead and dig into the passenger side bulb and uh, get the other side hooked up. Now on the passenger side, the bulb is not as readily accessible as it is on the driver's side because of the air box being in the way. So you really need to remove the air box to get access to the back side of the headlight. It's not difficult, it's just one extra step. I'll go through and tell you what you need to do. First off, I'm going to remove the connector for the mass air sensor, which is right here on the tube for the air box. I'm just going to set that off to the side. Then I'm going to go ahead and loosen this clamp right here on the air box tube to get it out of the way because I'm going to actually remove this accordion tube and push it aside like so and get it off of the tube there. Then there are four screws along the outer edges of the air box, just a Phillips head. My truck's actually missing one screw but there should be one at each corner of the airbox. Go ahead and unscrew those now. Unlike my Colorado, these ones are not captured, so they will fall and you will lose them. So make sure that you hold on to them when you're backing them out. This is a good opportunity to check your air filter. Once you have all those screws removed, you can pull the top of the airbox out of the engine bay, which is usually easier if you unclip this wire from the top of the housing. Just get it out of the way. I'm also going to just pull my air filter out and set it aside. Looks pretty clean. Then the bottom of the air box is actually just press fit with some rubber grommets into the piece of metal below. So you just need to pull up on it and then slide out the snorkel that goes into the fender and fish it out of the way. Good, good opportunity to get rid of all the gunk inside there as well. Now that you have that removed, you have clear access to the back of the headlight. Once you get the airbox removed from the passenger side, there is a shroud in the way that is just held in with a bunch of push pins that you can just simply pop off and then fold the shroud down out of the way. And then the installation of the bulb is exactly the same as the driver's side. So there's the rubber boot, pops out, set it aside, revealing your bulb inside. Same steps as before. There's the locking clip that you can turn from either side of the bulb down. And then the bulb should come right out of the way. Disconnect the wire and set aside your old bulb. Then you can take your new bulb, insert the connector, push the ballast into place, and then flick. Once you have the bulb installed, you can take that rubber grommet and reinstall it around the housing. This keeps dust and water and bugs and whatever else out of the housing. So it just pushes into place. Just make sure it's seated all the way around 
nice and, and good. Then on the passenger side you can reinstall this shield which is just held into place with push pins and just work your way around and pop them into place. To reinstall the airbox, you need to line up three pins on the bottom of the airbox. There's one here, there's one here, and then this slot fits in with this piece here on the airbox. So you just need to line up those three spots and pop it into place. So first, angle it in and get the snorkel into place and push it back. Then you can line up the two pins on the front and lock them down into place. Next, you're going to put in the air filter, which simply drops in place as well, like so. Make sure you get it sealed all the way around. Then you can take the top of the air box and drop it down onto the top of the filter, making sure it lines up with the holes for the screws. Then you can simply reinstall your four screws. In my case, three screws, because I'm missing one. Lastly, you need to reconnect the mass air sensor connector, lock it into place, pop the tab down here so the harness stays there. Then make sure you pull your air tube, accordion tube, back over the throat of the air box. Make sure you get it up all the way onto the air box. Then simply tighten the clamp, make sure that thing stays in place. So here's the output with both the Morimoto bulbs installed. Um, you can definitely tell they are brighter than the stock bulbs. The hot spots are bigger, have a wider pattern almost. There is the high beams on both bulbs. Definitely seem like they got a nice hot spot going, shining uh, a lot of light down the road. This segment of the video is comparing the original headlights to the new Morimoto headlights. The top is the originals, the bottom is the Morimotos, and you can see I've got the low beams there first, and now I have the high beams on. So you can see a real comparison of them in one frame. Feel free to pause the video to get a, you know, a better look. The last thing I want to show in this video, everyone, is how to adjust these headlights. They have an up and down adjustment. Now that you've changed the bulbs, they're brighter, so you need to adjust them so that they are not blinding other drivers. On both sides of the engine, above the housing of each headlight, there is a hole in the plastic right here in between these two rubber grommets that hold the hood. Down inside that hole is a little adjuster screw. You can just barely see it there. That's that white piece of plastic. You can just use a long Phillips screwdriver, stick it down into there, turning that screw right or left, adjust the headlight up or down. Thanks for tuning in. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to Fondue Pots Garage. More stuff coming all the time. Thanks for watching. See you later.